You are not your illness. You have an individual story to tell. You have a name, a history, a personality. Staying yourself is part of the battle. This is a quote by Julian Seffer, an internist from Boston. Mental illness has a stigma attached to it in today's society, whether it be from people looking at you differently or to treating you differently because or after knowing you have a mental illness. This poses a question, if they didn't know, would they treat you differently? Just because someone is suffering from depression, bipolar, anxiety, psychotic, eating and personality disorders does not mean they are their disease. Your viewpoint should not be determined by their illness, but by how they are as a human being. Our first story is about a famous YouTuber, Megan, who describes her anxiety. I have anxiety. It feels like every cell in my body is moving so fast that my veins are blurry. That despite the constant metronome of my heartbeat inside my ears, it's like listening to a spastic drumline. It feels like bees in my ears. Like a broken white noise machine playing all of the sounds at once. And I don't even realize I'm gritting my teeth or cracking my knuckles or rubbing my forefinger against my pinky or twisting the gold band on my middle finger. Holding on to myself like I'm the only lifeline bridging the gap between reality on my own two feet and the atomically loud abyss of noises and sounds and feelings of fleeting rushing through my veins. And I'm avoiding eye contact. Not because I'm not listening to what you're saying, because I'm listening to the sound of my own voice, hoping that through your ears you can't hear that it's two octaves too high and on the verge of breaking because my palms are sweating and I somehow forgot to speak with anything behind my words other than insecurity. My anxiety feels like fire unexplainably hot and rash and frustrating as I nod the inside of my cheek as if the solution to this feeling is buried between my teeth and gums. It feels like drowning, but it feels like burning and it feels like fucking forever. I imagine my feet moving with trails of dust behind them like those cartoons because somehow it feels like I'm moving faster than the 60 seconds they've allowed in a minute. All the while, I'm just playing catch up on the stopwatch doesn't add up like it did in high school mathematics. I can't carry the one and find the square root of the problem because most of the time, there is no problem. There's no life or death situation. There's no rhyme or reason. There is just feelings, and I'm feeling all of them at once. Allison then interviewed a lady named Sarah and asked her these three questions. What is your diagnosis? How did people react? And how did it make you feel? Sarah then answered saying, my psychological diagnosis includes major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, ADHD, and PTSD. Despite starting treatment for ADHD and MDD when I was seven years old, I didn't communicate that information with my peers until I was much older. I think for someone with a hidden illness, telling people is a little like coming out as gay. You don't know change, but the way people perceive you shifts. For example, when I talked to a coworker about some of my symptoms of depression and anxiety, she looked me up and down and simply said, well, I would have never known. You seem to be okay to me. This thoughtless and yet extremely common reaction is damaging to me because it makes my illness feel not real. Sometimes my anxiety can seem like it comes out of nowhere, but believe me, if you can see it, then I've been anxious for a while. Next, Allison shares her own story with mental illness. I am diagnosed with PTSD, ADD, and depression. I was diagnosed with ADD and depression when I was 14 years old. And when I was 17 years old, I was diagnosed with PTSD. It was easier for me to hide when I was younger, and because of, it, of that, I didn't tell many people about it. When my PTSD became more severe, I wasn't able to hide it as well. And when I got my service dog Flynn, I was forced to become more open about it with my fr family and friends. I have had a variety of interactions with people who have found out that I have mental illness. One of the most negative ones that has stood out to me is when I first got my dog Flint home. I was at the bank and a woman in the bank came up to me and asked what he was for and I told him he, that he was psychiatric medical alert and performed light mobility. Her response surprised me when she got wide-eyed and quiet and slowly walked away from me like I was going to hurt her or something. She then watched me the entire time I was in the bank. From these stories, I hope you see and realize what people go through with their mental illnesses. That having these mental illnesses does not mean you have to automatically judge them because of the stigma, but get to know them and what they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis.